let's go to a yarn festival. Hello, hello, this is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations and welcome to my YouTube channel. I have an awesome vlog for you today. So I have the opportunity to go to the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair, which is taking place just north of Salt Lake City in Utah. And what's really cool is this is the first fair that I ever went to for the fiber arts way back when I was in college and it really started me on the path of loving small businesses and loving hand dyed yarn and so it's really cool that I have a chance to go back and to visit for just a couple hours this Saturday afternoon. So let's go take a look.
it's me, Emily, again. So you just saw vlog, Emily. I kind of threw this video together a little bit because I worked three days on as a nurse and then I have a day and a half off and then I work three nights on. So minimal planning. I just really wanted to go to the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair. And so I did. <laughs> and I took you along with me and tried to show you what was going on there in just my look. It was mostly time spent in the marketplace with that little caveat, but I had a really good time and it was just so nice to be there and to be shopping and supporting other small makers and to be seeing names that I recognize or that I've interacted with before as well as meet some newer to me people. So that was just really fun and I had a really great time. Now I am home. My daughter fell asleep in the car on the ride back home after I met back up with my husband and I have my little yarn haul that I wanted to share with you. I videotaped really just my first look around at the marketplace. There were two like barns or buildings that had booths and there was maybe like 25-ish booths in each building. And that's where the marketplace was for this fair. And this fair took place over a Friday and a Saturday. I was working yesterday, so I couldn't go. And I was doing stuff this morning, so I also couldn't go in the morning. So I just had a couple hours around lunchtime that I could stop by and just kind of browse really quickly and kind of get a little bit of an experience. Did not get to like linger very long and get to know all that the fair had to offer, but maybe next year I'll be able to really enjoy like the classes and demonstrations and other things that they have there. They even have like after hours type of party thing going on Friday night, I think. This is just like my first look, first impression on just like a quick stop visit, but there's so much more that is at festivals and fiber art fairs like this one. And hopefully in the future, I can take advantage of all those cool extra things too. And not just the marketplace, but the marketplace is really, really cool. In my videos that I already shared, I showed the different booths as I was walking around. Not every single one, of course, but I tried to show a variety of the different color palettes and color stories that different yarn dyers had. I tried to show that there was a lot of more natural and like spun fibers too. There was like a whole range. That was the coolest part to me is that there weren't just like yarn dyers there, but there were spinners there. There were yarn dyers specific for fibers. There were farms and spinners and yarn companies, mills related to natural fibers that are locally sourced and things like that. There were other fiber artists there too, which was really neat that I wouldn't have thought of right away. I mean, of course there was dyers and knitters and crocheters around, but there were people tatting and there was like a tatting booth for a tatting guild or group. There were rug tufting booths and things. There was, what else? Oh, I passed this one booth. It was really cool. I had some spun silk, which is like thinner than embroidery floss. And it was hand dyed, beautiful range of colors. It was hand dyed, it was a beautiful range of colors, and it was so soft and drapey. And the dyer was telling me that they, you can double it up or triple it up for doing like embroidery stuff. You can use it holding it with other yarns to add those kind of fiber characteristics to whatever you're making. You know, it was just really interesting to see that. There were spinners set up and people carding wool. There was other like even yarn adjacent crafts, like a couple ceramic artists that were there that had all sorts of wares, but they had yarn bowls too, in addition to like their cups and vases and things. There was a basket weaver there too. Oh man, it was this, it was really cool to see. I did not realize how varied the marketplace would be. So that was just really neat to see. I bought mostly yarn. <laughs> so first thing I did when I got there and I parked, it was free. It was a free event, which was awesome. So I got to spend all my money at the marketplace instead of on buying a ticket, which was nice. I appreciated not having to worry about an admission cost. And that also made it uh, a little bit more accessible to even just enjoy the experience of being there. So the first thing I did when I got there 
was I just walked around both of the barns. I talked to people, I explored, I got to know some of the other makers and just took a lot of video trying to get a feel for everything that was there and show some cool things that I hope you guys really enjoyed seeing, just the variety, which was really neat. And then I went back through and I went backwards and I stopped by all the booths that I had kept a mental note of that I wanted to stop back at and potentially buy something at. So of course it would have been great to buy from all the makers, but budget wise, logistically, it wasn't gonna happen. So I tried to keep track of the booths I wanted to go back to. I'm so sorry about the noise. There's a mail truck going by. Just finished on my street, so hopefully it'll be a little bit quieter. But I tried to go back to all the booths that I had seen something that really caught my eye that I would consider taking home with me. I tried not to buy anything the first pass through, just to kind of ruminate a little bit and make some decisions later on. And then on my second pass through, I made some purchases. So I'm excited to share with you some of the things that I saw and that jumped into my hands. <laughs> so first I wanna share, this is actually not yarn, so that's why I'm starting with this. So the first thing I bought was a couple stickers. And what's really fun, this is a place called Cerulean Orchid, and I do not have a tag or a logo to share with you but they had all sorts of really cute, yarny themed stickers, which is adorable. There's this cat, yarn ball cat, and it was the last one I saw, so I'm so glad I snagged it. And then for Crochet Creations, I saw this crow with some yarn, so cute. But they even had like pop culture references, like a Pac-Man eating a couple balls of yarn. It was just like a lot of really cute stickers with yarn integrated in them, whether it was like, more subtle, like this one, that there's just yarn in the picture, or the thing is yarn. <laughs> so that was really fun. And they actually gave me like a little packet to put my stickers in, and in it I got a coupon code, and in it I got another sticker, and they also included a little stitch marker, like a little pumpkin on it. So that was just like a really fun little surprise goodies to go with what I bought. The next purchase I have that I wanted to share with you is from a dyer I've purchased from before, not directly, but from a local yarn store to me. So it was really fun to be able to see Yarnaceous Fibers at the fair and this colorway. This sock set was exclusive to the fair itself. And so that was really fun. I love getting one of a kind skeins or skeins with a special meaning, especially for an event like that. It doesn't even matter that it was exclusive because it's so pretty and these are my colors. And so I really wanted it. And when I found out that it was exclusive, actually what I did is on my first pass through, when I found out this was exclusive, I just picked it up and I bought it. I didn't even wait for my second pass through because I didn't want to miss out because I loved it. And then it was exclusive. This is the Salt of Fingering sock set. So Yarnaceous Fiber sock skeins are an 85% superwash merino wool and a 15% nylon blend. So a little bit different than what I typically use. A little bit more plump, I think, but still wanting to try it out. I've started a sock with Yarnaceous Fibers and I have not finished it yet. So it'll be a while. I think it's my like emergency car knitting, just a tube sock that I'm going to keep knitting on forever. But I like the feel of the yarn base so far, so I definitely want to use more of it. This colorway is called a Great Basin Spring. So pretty. And then this purple color was its own special colorway. It was a separate, you could buy full skeins of it, but I can't remember what it was called. I think it was named after a flower of some sort that I wasn't super familiar with, but love, love, love the colors. And then the next purchase, I was really excited to try out a new sock base for me. And so I thought it would be fun to experiment. This is Snowdrift Alpacas from Butte, Montana. This is the color Fabulous. And this yarn uses alpaca. It is a 70% alpaca and 30% nylon, so a very different blend than what I'm used to for socks. I don't know how well you can see, but it's definitely got more of a halo and like a fuzz, little bits of fiber hanging off of it than like a superwash merino. This is a non-superwash yarn, so it will felt a little bit probably over time. I don't know how well you can see. It is so soft. <laughs> I picked it up and I was like, wow need this and I saw it was a sock skein so I wanted to give this a try and kind of see how they wear and just kind of to try a new base for sock yarn see how it is I love the colors it's just really 
earthy and moody. I thought this would be perfect for the fall, especially because alpaca tends to be a warmer fiber than wool, like by comparison. I think it'll be great for some really cozy socks. I'm kind of going in the order that I bought things in, which is fun to kind of share my journey through the marketplace. But I found a new to me dyer that I had not known of before that I love. This is Witchfire Fibers. This is their logo. Fun and hollow. I think I grabbed the sticker, but I don't know where it went. It might be in my purse. <laughs> Ta-da! This is their old logo. But this is the combo that I bought. Definitely splurging a little bit, but I was really excited about this. So what caught my eye, I love the color palette that the dyer was going for. And it's so hard to choose the colors. They had some mini skein sets that were amazing, but also they didn't have the exact mini skein set that I had been eyeing from the sample that they had. A lot of times dyers will have samples made in their yarn to show off a pattern or a type of project in yarn that they have dyed so you can get a better idea of how that yarn works up, get more inspiration for buying their yarn, and they had a sample of a sock. It was just a vanilla stripy sock using a mini skein set and I adored it. But the mini skein sets they still had in stock were not quite the right colors, so I was trying to decide what to buy. And as I was looking, I saw this and I fell in love immediately. <laughs> this is their Summer Surrey base which is 65% baby alpaca surrey and 35% silk. So it's got a nice halo, very fuzzy. And the colorway is called Bullets and Blooms. And I just love how springy this mix is. It's beautiful. And this star is from Idaho, if I remember correctly. And then this, um, they're from different dye lots, so that's why they have like a different tag. But this is called Sagebrush. I got two skeins of fingering. It's their double double sock base. It's an 80 20 superwash merino and nylon blend and two ply. I love this color. I love like, this is like a muted mint green. I love it. And I thought it would pull out this green in the Surrey. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to make, but as I was talking with the dyer, they gave me the idea of a Bennett sister shawl, which I actually have the pattern already. So I thought, oh, that could be a really good idea. I'm not necessarily decided upon that, but I wanted some kind of idea of what I might make so that I could at least buy enough yarn for the potential pattern. Just because it would be a shame to only buy like one skein of each. And then if I tried to use them together and it just wasn't enough for the kind of project I decided on. So I played it safe. I got two skeins of the fingering, one skein of the Surrey, and this would be enough to make a Bennett sister shawl. So I could make that or I could make something kind of similar. So I'm excited to kind of see how that would turn out or what I end up deciding because I'm obsessed <laughs> and like I could not get over it. I found a new dyer that I really, really like, which is exciting. I also purchased from a dyer that I have bought from before and I really like their things and what's really cool is the very first time that I went to this fair was four years ago yeah because I graduated college four years ago and I graduated from this area and I went right after graduation and I had such a good time it was my very first fiber fair fiber festival and it just opened my world to hand out yarn and small yarn businesses. It was just, it really set me off in the direction of like where my making is now, I think. And this dyer, previously known as Hole in the Wool, had since rebranded as Yarn Nouveau. This is their logo. And I think that they do an amazing job at capturing the feel that they are looking for, the vibes, the color palette that they're looking for in their brand. I think they've done a really great job. So it was really cool to see like how they've progressed and they do a lot of tonals now that are just really beautiful and really multi-dimensional which is really cool lots of color layering this is the color cider and again i wanted to try a new sock base this is the yak sock base 70 percent superwash merino wool 20 percent yak and 10 percent nylon so this will be kind of fun to see how this works up. It's a three ply fingering weight yarn. And I just thought it was a really cool rusty brown color. They had literally like every shade of mauve under the sea. And I love mauve. And this is kind of like in that same family of like brownie, pinky 
colors and this is the one I decided on. I had a really hard time deciding which color I wanted to grab so I could support this dyer and really enjoy their yarn. It's just really fun. They told me that four years ago when I had my first time at a fiber festival, that was their first time at that fiber festival, which is really cool. So it's just fun to see lots of growth in, in their small yarn business and to see it grow and develop and really morph into like something that is really satisfying and fulfilling for that maker. So that was really cool. And I had to support them. So I got that skein. And then one dyer that I've not purchased from in the past, but I've had my eye on Yarn Cafe Creations. And I had no idea that both Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations, it's like a mother and daughter duo are from Utah and so they are pretty local to me. So they were both there. I didn't see anything at Dragon Horde Yarns that I really wanted to snag. I think that the colors are really beautiful but I just wasn't quite sure like what I wanted to make with any of them. So I'm gonna keep an eye on maybe a pre-order in the future that I'd wanna support but I saw something from Yarn Cafe Creations that I wanted to snag. Sorry, it's all crinkly. The Earthy Collection mini set sagebrush mini set. It's a little hard to see, but just some beautiful blues and greens faded together in a stunning way. And the names of these colors are so cute. It's things like sagebrush and prickly pear and aloe vera and all sorts of things. So I was not sure if I wanted to get the mini skein set or a full skein of sock yarn and I just had a hard time deciding but every time I was like oh maybe this one maybe this one all those colors I was considering were in this mini skein set so I just figured why not I'll just get the mini skein set it was bringing me joy and it made me happy <laughs> so I grabbed that and it actually came with a bag that has the earthy collection mini set sagebrush so that same exact label on here. And this is a good size for a sock project. So that's kind of fun to be able to get that too with it. There is my yarn haul from my time in the marketplace. It was so nice to be able to be on my own, shop around, and I didn't have a lot of time, but to be able to just experience that kind of fiber festival, because it's been a long time since I've experienced anything like that. And it just brought me a lot of joy to be able to see all these other makers and your compliments and what I was wearing. This is my ranunculus that I just recently finished using Treehouse Knits yarn. It was just really cool and it was so special to go and I had to kind of be outside of myself in filming a little bit and vlogging. It was honestly not as hard as I thought it would be because I just decided I'm gonna do it and so I just did it and I just wasn't shy about it and that helped me kind of get over the awkwardness and the fear of vlogging in front of everyone. I guess not awkwardness of fear, but like the self-consciousness. But I had some people ask me about it, like, hey, are you doing the video? Like, do you have a channel? What's your name? So it was cool to be able to talk to some people and to even have a couple people recognize my channel and my Instagram handle. That was like really, really cool to be able to have people like, oh yeah, like I've, I've heard of you. So it was just nice to be there. And I really look forward to hopefully planning to be there longer next year and to really get to experience all that the fair had to offer because I do feel like I missed out on demos and classes and getting to share experiences with these other makers because the shopping part is fun but that's also not all there is to enjoy at a festival and experience like that. Have you ever been to a fiber festival? What was your experience like? Have you really only explored like a marketplace or were you able to take classes? What was your favorite part of a fiber festival? What would you like to see the most if you were to go to a fiber festival or fiber fair coming up soon? Let me know down below because I would love to hear your experience because I really want to know what you have experienced and what you hope to experience in a fiber related event like that because you're part of my community and I just love to hear your stories and what has brought you the most joy in your fiber craft. I hope you enjoyed this video and coming along with me and seeing how my experience went as it just kind of dropped in and enjoyed the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair for just a little bit. And until next time, happy making. Bye.